Brand, Brand Man Sean. Welcome to the Culture Shock Show. We talk about everything in hip-hop culture on the mic and off. Brand Man, how you feeling today, my brother? Good, good, man. Happy to finally get this live stream shit right. Yeah, it took us a minute to figure this shit out, but thank God, you know, hopefully this shit goes smooth. Yeah, uh, sh- I shout out to Corey, man. We did a session live stream. That's where I kind of worked out a lot of the kinks out and figured it out. So, Corey, appreciate you, bro. Uh, what, what, to what, t- what topics we got today? All right, so really, I want to open it up with this little Nas X story. Um, you know, you're probably familiar with it, but pretty much this dude, I really wasn't familiar with the dude prior to this story. I'm going to be real with you. Um, people... Yeah you know, at my job or whatever, informed me that, you know, this is a guy on Twitter and he's kind of a troll and this and the third. Um, After I heard the record, solid record, um, the fact that it got to Solid record, bro? I mean, I mean, I mean. I can't even lie, bro. That shit is hard as fuck. I was laughing at first and then beat that bass drop, bro. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, man. So (laughs) here's the thing, man. A a lot of people been chiming in, but here's the thing. Um, if our music, you know, our if our interpretation of what a country music, a country music, country record sound like isn't going to be respected, then we need to take ownership in our charts. That's the problem right now. Rap is really friendly. Rap mm-hmm. is a very friendly genre. We let everybody in. But when it comes to these other genres, they protecting what they feel like is true country rock, whatever music. Um, and it's a yeah. double standard. It's a double standard going on. Um, and hip hop needs to kind of step up and kind of take some 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 ownership and, and kind of like, you know. All right, so should I go deep with it or all right? Take or notice. Just yeah. my surface level. Okay. <laughs> I mean, when you go into the like the genre and the way you're talking about people being friendly and everybody else protecting their culture, first thing I honestly thought of, which I had heard this this early this week, but I never thought about it is like isn't that like black people in general though like everybody else is good all these other categories or specialty like uh groups of people they are good at like no nah, this is us so we aren't gonna be we're not gonna be tolerant of this and we're gonna come attack you guys if y'all if y'all violate but right. you know we, we we're a little friendly we're we're very forgiving as a as a overall people you That's might have the to problem. Man, folks and and that's why I mean I don't know we share too much. I mean how many genres have we already given up anyway? Right? We gave that's up we gave it. up rock and roll, right? right? We gave up house music, right? right. People like, if you came up in two thousand, you probably think house music comes from like Europeans or some shit like that. You know what I mean? That's us. You know, one thing I told my brother, us. one thing I told my brother, I'm like, yo, hip hop is Brooklyn. If you're familiar with Brooklyn, I thought it was the Bronx. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is more of a metaphor. So yeah, it's okay. in the Bronx for sure. Okay. If anybody, if anybody following, if anybody in this chat is from Brooklyn, they know that Brooklyn today and Brooklyn 20 years ago is like two different worlds because of gentrification. Okay. And hip hop has been heavily gentrified to the point where um we don't really have no say in nothing. We don't have no say in who gets a job. We don't have no say in who stays, who doesn't. We have no say in nothing. And the mm. thing is, that's a problem, especially when we're not invited to go into these other genres and say, hey, can we do this? Can, can we give our interpretation of this genre? We like this music too. But for some reason that I haven't seen identified, um, yeah. his music isn't respected. As a uh, as a country record, and I don't really understand. Do you un- do you know what the technical reason with the press release was as to why this song was taken off? I mean, too much 808s probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro. Yeah. I really don't know because content. Why? I mean, he talk about a horse. I don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, cause I like I I come from a background where I like genuinely enjoy like a vast array of music. I like, I know a lot of people say country music is trash. I fuck with a lot of country music, honestly. Um, and as a matter of fact, if you look at hip hop, there's a lot of current low key country influence in hip hop now because of Kanye. And it's mostly right. around hooks. Like Kanye came out and said like early 2000s um, that how like he loved country music or he used country music basically for the, the melody and hook. And you hear that, and right. think about Kanye stuff, and then think about how Travis is offshooting 
of Kanye, uh, Kanye. And then you think about all the people who are inspired by uh, Travis. So it's interesting that you have, like, once again, us accepting um, stuff or uh, we'll be putting things in there slick. I don't, but I don't really care about, like, the technicality of why it is or why it isn't. Because, you know, at the end of the day, genres are a little theoretical. It's subjective, blah, 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 blah. I, yeah. I just don't. I'm just mad because I didn't even know you could do that shit. Right. That's what I'm mad at. Yeah, because yeah. if you if you look at the top tracks on um hip hop charts right now, right, bruh, like they are like the top two or three tracks. Um, I was listening to um, Joe Butter and somebody uh, earlier this week, I think, and they were talking about the top track was like the, this track from Spider Man, Post Malone and uh, what's his name? Sw- Sw- is it Sway? What's the uh, dude from Ray Sherman? Oh, Sway Lee? Um, yeah, Sway Lee. Yeah, Post Malone, Sway, Sway Lee, a little right. pop, little kitty track, you know. Um, the second one on the track is Post Malone, which is more of a hip-hop record, but it's still like, all right, it's Post. Then the third one, then then uh, Middle Child is like number four, right. which is true, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right, Matt, right. So that's the problem, man. And to sum it up, you know, really what it is is that hip-hop, was the genre that started in the Bronx. It grew. 1979, first, yeah. you know, record on the charts. Then 1980, Curtis Blow. Then, you know, Grandmaster Flash. All of these guys sparking. Run DMC comes through. They sign an Adidas deal. This changes the game. It's now blowing up. You're getting Rock Kims. You're getting Big Daddy Kane's. You're getting the Ice Cubes, the NWAs. It's going crazy. You get the MC Hammers, the guys who are having number one, number two, Hot 100 records. This is where the split happens. This is where you have three different cultures really going on. You have gangster rap, you have backpack rap, guys who listen mm-hmm. in the tribe and guys who listen in the main source, and then you have the commercial rap lovers, mostly white people. They like MC Hammer, they like Vanilla Ice, they and, and, and maybe Ice Cube. So, <laughs> 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 so then what really happened is in 1992, Death Row breaks through the Chronic, Snoop Dogg, sells millions of records. And this is the first time really gangster rap, backpack rap, and commercial rap were kind of all bundled together with the Mm. Chronic. Like the Chronic was a type of project that really serviced all of these fans at one time. It didn't matter what type of hip hop you liked. You liked Gin and Juice. You liked, uh, you know, uh, all of them records. Everybody smoked, basically. At this time, at this time, Everybody saw this as a great thing. Okay. Everybody looked at Snoop and looked at Dre like rappers are getting rich and being real at the same time. This is crazy. This is crazy. So they would sign these deals. They would sign away their record companies. And this was the end of the black owned record company. This was like when the, the curve point started happening mm-hmm. where in the late eighties, when everybody was wearing black, green and red, Everybody, it was tons of black owned record companies. You had Uptown Records. By 1995, Uptown Records done folded. Yeah, you got Bad Boy Records, but they owned by Arista Records, which is owned by, you know. So it's like, at the end of the day, everybody saw that commercialization of hip hop as like, wow, we made it. And we did make it. But 25 years later, we're seeing that fully grown monster and what that actually looks like. And now, and, and people didn't really weigh the cons um, all of the way, I think, way back in the, in the late 80s and the early 90s. The con of what you're saying right now is basically that argument for assimilation representing a loss of power over time. The loss of power over time for fans. My biggest, like, I think a lot of that is, I, like, I agree with a lot of that. My biggest problem, right, is kind of like, like how we talked about, like, Black people giving up, like, the things that they create. And, I mean, that's what the whole music industry is, right? Artists giving up things that they create from its onset. Now it's trying to change, whoop de whoop whatever. But I think it won't change anytime soon because the same shit that makes Black people so great at creating culture is the same thing that keeps us from maintaining it and honoring it. Like it's the same reason we look at house 
a lot of times, or people start to look at houses as, oh, that's old, that's whack, right? Black people, they don't like old shit, bro. Right. You, you, you get new houses in a neighborhood, bro, like they, they gonna move to the new, you know, oh, this is new. It's not better necessarily. It's not brick houses. It's a wood right. house, but it's new, it's clean, right? right. And like, it's that we, that innovation, like that innovation mentality that the culture has, that's why we're so finicky, right? And you have, is what have you done for me lately? And that, that forces us to create new stuff, be different. Right, we quickly get a distaste from things that feel old or it feels like everybody are do- is doing. Right. But with that same thing that forces you to innovate, it also, you know, it, it also causes you to not be able to honor and uphold the legendaries that have already happened and, and right. all the work been put in. And now right. other people say, oh shit, it's still like a lot of money to be made here. It's still a lot of foundation here. Let's, let's go build on this ground. So right. we lay the foundation and they build. We lay the foundation and they build. That's the problem with that, yep. with, with that right now. Yep, yep, agreed.